praise the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We welcome you, amen, into the house of God on tonight, amen. We thank God that he has afforded us this day, this time, amen, this opportunity to come together in his His house and to magnify his great name, amen. Amen, come on, let's bless the name of the Lord tonight and thank him for all that he has done in this day. Thank him for his grace and his mercy and his kindness that he continuously shows towards us. Amen. 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 We thank you for just being faithful to us. Amen. At this time, amen, we're going to ask that you would tag and share someone on the, with the broadcast on tonight. Welcome them and invite them, amen, to receive the word of the Father on tonight. At this time, we're going to make it ready for scripture and prayer, and we'll continue to move forward into the things of the Lord on tonight. Amen. 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 Today's scripture coming from the book of James, the first chapter, verses 19 through 21. And the word of the Lord reads, understand this, my dear brothers and sisters, you must be quick to listen, slow to speak, yes. and slow to get angry. Yes. Human anger does not produce the righteousness God desires. So get rid of all the filth and evil in your lives, and humbly Accept the word God has planted in your hearts. Oh, yes. For it has the power to save your souls. Amen. And the word of the Lord has been blessed. Hallelujah. 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 Father God, as we come before you. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Father God, for another opportunity, God, to be found in your house. Thank you, Lord. Thank Worshiping you, God. Yes. Honoring you, God. God, glorify your holy name, Father God. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. God, thank you for this day, Father God. Thank you for this day, Father God. God, thank you for your safety, Father God. Thank yes. you for your covering, God. Yes. God, thank yes. you for your protection, Father God. Yes. God, thank you for providing a way, God. Thank you. God, thank you for it all, God. As we are in this place on this evening, God, we desire to hear from you, God. Yeah, Lord. Yes. God, move in a mighty way, Father move God. Move in a mighty way. God, let your word be planted in our ears yes. and in our hearts, Father God. Yes, Lord. For God, we just want more of you, God, and less of our sins, yes. God. Yes, God. Yes, God. God, we're so gracious, Father God, and thankful, Father God, for such a time as this, God. Yes, God. To be right here, Father God. Hallelujah. Standing on your holy Thank ground, God. Father God. Thank the Lord. In a holy place, God. Yes, God. Glorifying your holy name, God. Yes. Yes. God, speak to the queen of this house, Father God. Yes, Lord. God, give a mighty word, God, that will impact yes. our lives, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. God, that will challenge us, Father God. Thank you, Lord. God, that we can go down, God, from this place on this evening, God, meditating on your word, God. Yes, Lord. God, that we can wake up in the morning, God, if that's what you desire, Father yes. God, to meditate on your word, God, or what we yes, gonna hear God. tonight, Father God. Yes, Lord. God, we pray for the angel of this house. We pray yes. for Bishop, God. Yes. God, we pray for his protection, Father God. Yes, God. God, we pray for this ministry, Father God. And not just this ministry, God, but all the ministry, God, worldwide, God, preaching the gospel, Father God. The true gospel, Father God. The gospel is not watered down, God. But they will challenge your people, God. For God, we just want to tell you that we love you, God. We bless you, God. We honor you, God. In Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Come on, people of God, let's put our hands together and magnify the Lord tonight, for he alone is worthy to be praised. Amen. How many you know we serve an awesome God? Amen. And because we serve an awesome God, he deserves awesome praise on tonight. Amen. 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 Let's move forward into worship and create an ideal environment that our Savior will be welcome enough to enter into. Amen. Hallelujah. Our God is an awesome
And we thank you for being faithful and kind unto us. Amen. Come on, can we thank God for another day? If you're not too stingy tonight, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We serve a magnificent Father, a magnificent Savior, who is always worthy to be praised. Doesn't matter what it looks like. Doesn't matter what it's been. Amen. Our God is yet worthy to be praised on tonight. Amen. We honor the Lord and we thank you for being so kind unto us that he would allow us to make it here into his house on tonight. Amen. Amen. If you have your Bibles, we're going to go directly to the word of God on tonight. Amen. Turn with me to John, the 11th chapter. Amen. I pray that you came with open hearts and open spirits to receive the word from the Lord on tonight. It's nothing like receiving what God has to say, amen, to encourage us each and every day that we are still here in this terrible world, amen. Hallelujah, we need a daily word that will encourage us, amen, and that will shift our whole atmosphere. Am I right about it? Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, one more time. Somebody just shout hallelujah in the atmosphere. Oh, come on, let's wake up the dead spots, amen, our tiredness. Can we shake it up in here tonight? Hallelujah, I'm tired of coming to service. of his children and we thank him for meeting every need in our lives on tonight amen hallelujah hallelujah if you have your word say word amen we're going to start amen at verse four and actually i'm gonna do like bishop let's go up amen let's start at verse one amen 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 and you'll find these words recorded now a man named lazarus was sick and he was from Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. Uh -huh. This Mary, whose brother Lazarus now lay sick, was the same one who poured perfume on the Lord and wiped his feet with her hair. Uh -huh. So the sisters sent word for Jesus, Lord, the one you love is sick. Uh -huh. Verse 4 says, when he heard this, Jesus said, this sickness will not end in death. Uh -huh. No. It is for God's glory, so that God's Son may be glorified through it. Uh -huh. Now, Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. Uh -huh. So when he heard that Lazarus was sick, he stayed where he was two more days. Yeah, yeah. Come on, somebody said, the Lord sometimes does unbelievable things. Amen. Amen. And then he said to his disciples, let us go back to Judea. Judea. Amen. And the word of God is blessed on tonight. Father, we thank you for this time of gathering. We ask God that you will bless this word, that you would hide me behind the cross, that I will say only what you would have me to say. I would do only what you would have me to do. I pray that the hearts and minds of your people are open to receive your word on tonight. That it would be a word of empowerment and a word of encouragement. And Father, we just say we love you, we honor you, we thank you for this opportune time that you've given unto us. We ask, oh God, that you allow your spirit to stay with us a little while longer. Don't leave us and never forsaken us, God. But we tell you that we need you in this hour. I need you in this hour. In your son Jesus' name, your servants do pray on tonight. Amen and amen. And the word of God is the place you may take your seat with a shout. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Tonight, if I could tag it with a topic, amen, I would say we serve an on-time God. Hallelujah. I just felt something when I said that. Amen. I've been saying it all day long. I ain't felt what I wanted to feel. Amen. But I just felt that right there. Amen. We serve an on-time God. Amen. And this is the perfect place to show, amen, us and to remind us that we absolutely serve an on-time God. Amen. Amen. Have you ever gone through some things in your life and you ask, Lord, where are you? And if you love me like you say you do, then why do you allow things to happen to me that will feel, that make me feel as if it will bring harm to me? Or why do you stop this situation from happening? And in the midst of worrying, amen, and murmuring and complaining about the pain and disappointments we go through, we start moving in our own strength, and we start moving and relying on our own understanding, and we cause major damage to our faith, so much so that it becomes fractured faith, amen? 
Amen. And when you're talking about fractured faith, amen, you're talking about something that's damaged or has been destroyed in a sudden way. And I don't know about you, but over the course of this year, last year, certain things happened that caused a little damage to my faith. Amen. Am I talking to anybody in here? Amen. Something could have happened this week that caused you to question God and say, Lord, why? I know you could have fixed this. I know you could have shipped this. I know you could have turned it around and allow it to work out for my good. Amen. And he does just that because the word of God says in Romans 8 and 28 that he will allow all things to work for our good. He says, and we know. And we know, so there is no question, there is no doubt, amen, we know without a shadow of doubt that God is working things out for our good, amen. I used to ask the question, amen, God, why? Why do bad things happen to good people? Anybody ever asked that before? Amen. If they're sick, can't you just heal them? Amen, Lord. If they need deliverance, can't you just deliver them, Lord? If they need somewhere, can you provide shelter for them? Amen. And then you'll start hearing the scriptures come to your remembrance. Amen. Such scriptures like Isaiah 60 and 22. When the time is right, I, the Lord, will make it happen. How many times have we tried to make things happen? And God said, no, not yet. You have got to wait on me. You got to wait on me. You got to wait on me to move. Amen. To let you know when things are getting ready to happen. Amen. So I don't know about you, but I'm reminded of these scriptures. Amen. Especially this particular scripture. We try to force things into, into will. Amen. But we've got to learn how to wait on God. And if we're not careful at times, we'll allow the things that we're going through. Amen. The pain that we're experiencing. Amen. It'll have us questioning the characteristics of God. Amen. If I know what I'm talking about tonight, you go through things, you start saying, but God, I thought you was on that present. God, I thought you was a healer. God, I thought you was a provider. Wait a minute. I said it. I know you said it. Amen. Amen. But God says, at the end of the day, I am still in control. All I ask is that you will rely on me. One of the most awesome moments in Jesus' ministry was that of raising Lazarus, his friend, from the dead. You got to have some kind of next level faith in order to raise a human being from the dead, amen. Now, after all this, you know that Lazarus was a friend to Jesus, amen. He was a friend to Jesus, one whom he loved, and his name actually means, amen, one who God helped, amen. Amen, and so Jesus had a close relationship with his family, with this particular family. You see, when Lazarus, he, when he was sick, it was natural for them to bring their concerns to Jesus because Jesus was always close to them. He would have a relationship with them. And it wasn't the same relationship that he had with Martha. It wasn't the same relationship he had with Mary. It wasn't the same relationship that he may have with us. How many know that God has different relationships with his children? Amen. And so they were expecting a miracle to happen as soon as they sent word. Amen. Amen. But what happens when we send God a word? The Lord, we need your help and we need it to happen right now. Lord, we need a miracle and we need that miracle to happen right now. I'm in a very, I'm in a very bad place, God, but I feel like I'm not going to come out. I feel like I'm not going to pull through. I feel like things are not shifting. I feel like my job ain't working around right. My children acting crazy. Husband acting strange. Ministry going crazy. God, I need a miracle to happen right now. But what happens when he doesn't meet that need right now? Amen. And so we, we can start reading in verse 3 through 5. Amen. And we'll find where, Jesus, where the scripture went as so as this. So the sisters sent word to Jesus. Lord, the one you love is sick. They didn't say Lazarus is sick. But they said, Lord, the one you love is sick. Meaning they're trying to remind him. Now you said you love him. And we're telling you that he's sick, so he needs your help. We need you to come right now and begin to heal. Has anybody ever been a Lord, you know me by name. I'm your son. I'm your daughter. I'm your child. I preach your word. I pray for people that don't even pray for me. Can you come and answer my prayer? What happens when God doesn't show up when we need him to? Tell your neighbor, we still serve an on-time God. Amen. And so here in verse 3 through 5, amen, she says, Lord, the one you love is sick. When he heard this, Jesus said, this sickness will not end in death. No, it is for God's glory so that God's son may be glorified through it. How many times have we said, Lord, I don't understand, but help my unbelief. 
I understand that you're saying every sickness is not unto death, but according to what the doctors are reporting, according to what they're saying about this, that not according to what I'm experiencing in my marriage, it seems like it's dead. What I'm experiencing in my finances, it seems like my finances have died. Lord, what I'm experiencing in my body, it seems like it's not easing up, but it's getting worse and worse. But then God brings to your remembrance what he did with the woman with the issue of blood. She waited 12 years, but she waited until her change come. She didn't wait on him because she went to him. Sometimes you got to change your position. Amen. Jesus was more than two miles away from Bethany. Amen. And they were sitting word back and forth. And I said, Lord, two miles away from where I'm at, God, I thank you for the telephone. I think that I'm able to text because they're walking back and forth. My God. Come on now, how are we going to walk back and forth just to get a word to someone? But when you are in dire need of a miracle from God, amen, you'll do what you need to do. Am I right about it? Amen. And so he says, no, this sickness is not unto them, but it's for God to be glorified. Amen. Sometimes God will allow us to experience frustration. He'll allow us to experience pain. He'll allow us to experience defeat. Amen. At times, so that God can get the glory out of what we're being faced with. Am I making sense tonight? And so what I got from that is that God was looking at the whole situation from an eternal perspective. Amen. Sometimes we look at situations for right now. Amen. I need the bill paid right now. But God said, it's not a right now thing. If you just learn how to trust on me, I got something bigger and greater that's in store for you. You may not even have to pay the bill. If you just hold your horses, I help sister so and so go and pay for it. For you, you don't have to worry about your lights getting cut off. You don't have to worry about food not being in the pantry. God will always have a raven that will bring you exactly what you need if we just learn how to trust the Lord and never doubt him. Amen. Somebody say it's an eternal perspective. Eternal simply means without an end and without a beginning, which is what God is. He has no end and no beginning, and yet he is the beginning and ending of all things. Am I right about it? Amen. But what we must all realize in this is that Jesus had eternal perspective. He has eternal perspective when it comes to us. He doesn't deal with the temporary things. The temporary things are those things that we see. We get sidebarred by what we see. I can easily get distracted by what's going on in the atmosphere. But when you become focused on the things of God and the assignment that God has put in your life, you will not be distracted. You will not grow weary. You will not become frustrated because the assignment is bigger than what you see. But what we all must realize is that Jesus has an eternal perspective for all of us. Meaning Jesus wasn't focused on what he heard as temporary sickness, but he heard and saw eternal life. He saw a situation and he saw eternal life. This is the perfect opportunity to bring faith into those around him. Amen. You know how it is when you're going through things and everybody around you is not focused. Everybody don't have the faith that you have. Amen. Everybody is not focused and saying, well, the Lord is going to provide, but they're not even saying anything to encourage you either. Amen. Amen. They'll see you in a situation and they're not worried about how you're going to come out of it. Amen. Amen. But thanks be unto God that God will always have one particular person that will encourage you and remind you that God is still working on the case. Amen. So God would always find the perfect opportunities in our lives to birth faith in us. Amen. So I said, Lord, thank you that all my situations would not take me out, but it'll cause my faith to be increased. And I believe that's what's happening these last and evil days. Many are going weary in their faith when God is saying, shift up the faith. Go to the next level in your faith. That means you're going to have to pray a little harder. Yeah, amen. Sometimes you're going to have to seclude yourself from family and friends. Amen. So you can hear the voice of God. A lot of us are being distracted. We don't want to get out the bed when God shakes and moves us. Amen. And we're missing out on what God is really trying to get to us. Amen. Yeah. Remember in verse 4 it says the sickness, this sickness, whatever it is we're facing, it will not end in death. But it is for God's glory so that God's son may be glorified through it all. What happened? Jesus changed the perspective and he stayed two more days. Amen. Amen. He, that was a whole day's journey to go from Bethany to where Jesus was. And so he knew that his friend was sick, but he stayed two more days. I believe God would allow us to 
stay in what we're going through, amen, so that we can get our minds right, amen. We have to learn how to ask God to renew our minds, to transform our spirits, so that what we're going through, what we're facing, and what we're praying will line up with the will of God. We're missing out on the blessing of God because we're not asking for the alignment of God to be manifested in our lives when we go through things, amen. amen. Tell your neighbor, a changed perspective is an eternal perspective. It's not temporary, but it's eternal. Amen? Not only will a changed perspective change our actions, but it will also change and shift our mindsets and our attitudes. How we know when you're going through things, your attitudes get a little bit bad? I'm on that. Start being like Lazarus a little bit. You're stenching. You got a stench to you. Amen. Nobody want to talk to you because you're walking with a chip on your shoulder. Amen. You're walking with your head down. Or you don't want to hug nobody. Tell you somebody, I love you. There's nothing. You can't get nobody to do that. Nobody wants to do it when they're going through things. Amen. Are y'all listening in here? Amen. And so we got to learn how to change our mindsets, our attitudes, and our perspective about things that we go through. Tell you, they will change your perspective. Transform it. Transform it. Amen. What is seen is a physical and temporal world, but what is unseen is a spiritual and eternal world. According to 2 Corinthians 4, 17 through 18, it says, for our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. Verse 18, it says, so we fix our eyes, not on what is seen, but what is unseen. Since what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. That's eternal perspective. Instead of looking on uh, things that you're going through, guess what? That's just temporary. This sickness is temporary. The bills are temporary. This too shall pass. Amen? Amen. But I'm so glad that we serve a God who is always on time. It may seem like you're about to lose it, but God will show up in the nick of time. He'll give you the added strength. He'll give you the added grace. He'll give you the added mercy. He'll even give you peace that you need when you're going through. And I'm grateful because my pain has always put me in a place, amen, with the Lord that says, hey, I'm giving you your pain. I'm protecting you. In the midst of a storm, I'm yet protecting you. I'm shielding and protecting you from danger seen and unseen. How you know when you're going through, you don't see everything. You don't see the good things that God is trying to keep you from. Amen? Amen. And so we got to learn how to thank God that he is always there and allowing us to focus on the eternal versus focusing on those temporary things. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's go and read verse 23 through 27. And you'll find these words recorded. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha answered, I know he will. I know he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. And Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live. Come on now. If we believe in him while we're going through situations, we can make it through anything. Amen. He can resurrect everything that we're facing. Amen. Even though they die and whoever lives by believing in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said, yes, Lord. I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, who is to come into the world. And so she didn't even recognize that the Lord was really there. He was really coming back. Even though he might have been four days late, he still showed up. But he came back and he would say, he, and that's one thing I love about the Lord. When he shows up, amen, he don't come empty-handed. But he comes bringing exactly what we need to make it in that particular situation. And so he began to tell her, I know he will rise again. That's what Martha said to Jesus. I know he will rise again. And he's like, I am the resurrection. I am the life. Amen. Amen. And so from this, we must first understand that God's timing is always perfect. Amen. When Jesus arrived, Lazarus was four days in the tomb. Amen. But he still showed up. How long have you been in this situation? You was like, Lord, are you coming or are you not coming? But at the end of the day, the Lord still showed up. Can we thank God that when he showed up, he showed up on time? We got to learn how to realize that our timing is not God's timing. We can't put a time limit on God. He may not go to the songwriter say, he may not come when you want him to. But he is always on time. I thought I was
was talking to some people that knew what I was talking about. Amen. So how long did it take for Jesus to show up for you? Was it a year? See, we don't want to go that, that far into waiting on the Lord. And that's where we get messed up at, the waiting process. We don't want to sit still. And here's the thing, though. Even when you're waiting, you're not just sitting still. You're praying. Amen. The word of God says never cease from it. So while you're waiting, you're praying. What are you praying about? You're praying about your neighbor. Come on, Jesus already know what you're going through. But he's trying to see, do you know how to pray for somebody else? Can your prayers lift a burden off of somebody else? I know you're weak. I know you're frustrated. I know you got a little doubt going on. I know you feel like it ain't going to work out on your behalf. But if you try Jesus, amen, he'll allow things to work out on your behalf. And it will yet be on time. Amen. Amen. According to Numbers 23 and 19, it says, God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man, that he should repent. If he said it, guess what? Will he not do it? Or have he spoken, and shall he not make good on it? Tell your neighbor, he shall make good on it. He will make good on it. Has God made good on any word that he's spoken over your life? And it promises, come on, we got to learn how to rejoice and be glad in what he's already done. I've learned that if we rejoice and thank God for what he's already done, then when that particular storm comes, that particular hardship arrive in your life, that's what your prayers are already stored up. It won't cause you to grow weary. It won't cause your faith to become weak and torn down and cause you to doubt God. Remember I said when we go through things, pain will begin to make us question God's characteristics. Anybody ever been there? So we got to learn how to not allow pain to take over our lives. Amen. But we got to learn how to trust in the word of God. You see, it's not that he can't heal, and it's not that he can't provide it, and it's not even that he won't turn it around. It is just the fact of the matter, amen, that we should already know that with God, all things are possible. Amen. And again, Isaiah 16, 22, I love the scripture, when the time is right. <laughs> when the time is right, I, the Lord, will make it happen. Many of us, we want to, you know, we cry about uh, what we don't have in our homes because we're trying to look at somebody else's home. We cry because our vehicles are down or broke, disgusted, and, and then we cry because the bank account ain't on swole, and we cry because we're not wearing red bottles. God said, wait a minute, what you crying and complaining about? When the time is right, whatever your heart's desires is, if I can get the glory out of those things, that's what is yours for the accent. Because the word of God says we have not because we ask not. And when we ask, we ask the miss. We ask wrong. We're doing it for selfish gain. But we should always be, be mindful and remember that when we ask the Father of things, God, how can I be a blessing to somebody else? God, how can this particular thing that I'm asking for, how can you get the glory out of it? Amen? Amen. Tell you that the Lord will make sure that all of you is out of you before he connects to you. I know that's a whole lot. I know that's a whole lot to say. You don't have to worry about saying it tonight. But I just want you to understand that. That the Lord will make sure that before he connects to you, he has to get you all the way out of you. Amen? In other words, when you have tapped completely out, he'll show up right in the nick of time. When you learn how to release your hands from things and your thoughts about that particular thing, and then God will allow that connection to be made. Amen? Psalms 18 and 30 says, As for God, his ways is perfect, and the word of the Lord is tried. He is a buckler to all those that trust in him. Do anybody trust in the Lord tonight? Are you trusting him and not leaning to your own understanding? It's our understanding that will talk us out of the blessings of God. It's our own understanding that will lead us into, te into temptation. Amen. Amen. And so we got to learn how to trust in the Lord at all times. Secondly, we must understand that God's ways are not our ways. Remember, again, he has an eternal perspective about you. Isaiah 55, 8 through 9 says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than yours. And my thoughts are higher than your thoughts. We don't know the mind of God. All we have to go on is his word and his promises. Amen. He promised us, amen, hope and an expected end. And we're dependent on that hope and expected end. Amen. So what do we do in the waiting process? 
This is what Martha should have been doing instead of crying and complaining and worrying about if God was going to come through and raise her brother from the dead. Amen? What we must do in the process is wait, pray, and believe. A lot of us, we're waiting, we're praying, but we're not believing. We're just saying words, and we're not adding faith to what we're facing. Amen? Amen. Wait means to expect or to look for. But again, it also means to serve. While we're waiting on that blessing from God, can we still serve? And not just serve any kind of way, but serve with a joyful heart. You means you got to put a smile on your face. I know what we're facing. Amen. Trust me, a couple months ago, I went through some things, amen, but I still came in and I served the Lord with gladness. It wasn't a fake servant, amen. It was one that came from a painful place, but guess what? To God be the glory. God can restore. God can give you the added strength you need. He will give you the peace, amen, for the journey that we go through, amen. Again, 1 Thessalonians 5 and 16 tells us we are to pray without ceasing. Never stop praying. The moment you stop praying, the moment hell breaks loose. The moment you stop praying, that's the moment that the enemy will come in and wreak havoc in your life. So I'm grateful that when I read this word of God, amen, I saw that Mary stayed in the house. And she didn't come out until Jesus showed up. And I start saying, well, why did Mary stay in the house all that time? I believe Mary was in there praying. Because she knew that the resurrection power was about to show up. She knew, she knew that Jesus was not going to go without coming to see about his brother and the needs that were going on. Amen? So, but when we look at Martha, we can see, amen, that her faith had begun to expire a little bit. Amen? When God never put an expiration in faith, we are to grow in faith daily. The word of God says from faith to faith and from glory to glory. And if we know anything about faith, we must understand that faith is to be released and not held on to. It is seeds that are to be released into the ground and not held on to. Amen. But while waiting, wait as if things have already manifested. Again, we're to give God glory. We're to give God praise. I know it hurts. But you don't let the enemy know. You don't show him that he has the upper hand because guess what? He does it. God is still in control and he will yet show up on time. Somebody said, we serve it on time, God. When we're thinking about waiting, you got to think about those who waited before us. The woman with the issue of blood, she waited 12 years according to Mark 5 and 25. When we think about the woman with the spirit of infirmity, it was 18 years, according to Luke 13 and 11. And when we think about the man at the pool, it was 38 years, according to John 3 and 5. And when we think about the man born blind, it was 30 plus years, according to John 9 and 1. And then when we think about the crippled man at the beautiful gate, it was 40 years, according to Acts 3 and 2. And if God showed up on time for them, what makes you think he won't show up on time for you? Thirdly, God always has the final say. Uh, let's go to verse 38 and 44, and you'll find these words recorded. Jesus, once more deeply moved, came to the tomb. It was a cave with a stone laid across the entrance. And verse 39 says, take away the stone, he said. But Lord, said Martha, the sister of the dead man, by this time there is a bad odor, for he has been there four days. How do you know that God don't care about your mess? He'll get involved in your mess. Amen. He don't care about how you smell while you're going through what you're going through. He will yet. He ain't even like our bougie friends. He'll jump right on in there. Amen. Verse 40 says, then Jesus said, did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. Then Jesus looked up and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me. But I said this. For the benefit of the people standing here, that they may believe that you sent me. See, sometimes God have to wait until he bring in, amen, the naysayers before the great work is done. 
Come on, while you're going through, people on the side talking about you. Look, at I thought she was supposed to be a woman of God. I thought she was, he was a man of God. I thought God always blessed his people. And this other God said, you know what? All y'all come. Come to this gathering. Me, I got something to show you. I got something to show you how powerful the resurrection power is. How powerful this thing is about to be. Amen? And so I'm grateful that when he brought all those people together, you had everybody saying, well, you know, if this was this the same man that, that uh, caused the blind man to sit again? You mean to tell me he could come see about his friend, the one he loved, and raise him up and heal him before he died? Guess what? It's about to happen. Somebody say, it's about to go down. God likes to do it in front of people that deny the power of God. Though his delay is never denied in our lives. Amen? I just want to tell somebody tonight, nothing has gone too far in your life that has passed God's help. It doesn't matter what it is. God is still an on-time God. And so the fascinating thing about it, what I got excited about was verse 39. When God walked in, he says, when Jesus walked in, he says, take away the stone. Take away the stone. What this said to me was remove the barrier. I'm not through here. So a lot of times in our lives, we allow barriers to separate us from the will of God. Amen. Stones can represent a barrier between where a person is and where a person should be. See, Elijah was in the side inside of the tomb, but he should have been on the other side of the tomb, standing, amen, in health, in strength. And so God sometimes will bring people around you, amen. He'll prepare a table before you in the presence of your enemy. He'll allow you to sit there so they can watch the blessings and the manifestation of God to move mightily on your behalf. They don't count you out. They don't count your ministry out. They don't count your children out. But God said, just wait one second, hold up, the show is not over. I'm glad you made it, I'm glad you're still talking. Because after this miracle, after this blessing, there will be no more conversation other than the resurrection power did this. Yes. See, we can't take the glory. We got to learn how to give it back to the Lord, all that he does for us. Amen? So you and I must learn how to stop putting the stones of hopelessness and despair over our lives and in our hearts as if God isn't able to resurrect whatever has died in our lives. A lot of times we go through things and we feel like it's over and we begin to put a period right there. Well, I ain't got the money, period. Well, I ain't got the healing, he ain't came through yet, period. But God is saying, if you even look at what he did in the scripture, amen, on verse 39, he says, take away the stone. What do you see behind the stone? It's a comma there. So that means he's not through. He got something else that he wants to do. I thought I was helping somebody right there. You are not to put a period where God has placed a comma in your life. It's common sense. Though it may look like it's dead right now, guess what? God is still working on my case. Tell your neighbor, God is still working. And if he can raise Lazarus from the dead, guess what? This particular thing that I'm going through is nothing for the Lord. It's just another way that a miracle will be birthed through me. Amen? Amen. So again, these stones that we bring in our lives and we put in our lives, we, it's a barrier. It's a thing that will separate you from the will of God. Amen? Amen. So again, you and I must learn how to remove these stones and allow God to live in our hearts. Amen? And to live freely and move and do exactly what he needs to do. Amen? Amen? Amen. And so we're grateful and thankful unto God that nothing is beyond God's power when it comes to us. Because we serve an old time God. He's never late. But he's always right on time. Amen? And out of all those in the Bible that was brought back to life, our Savior Jesus Christ, he was the first to be resurrected and raised from the dead, never to die again. The song says, because he lived, I can live. And I'm not just going to live, but I'm going to face tomorrow. Amen? I'm allowing my faith to take me higher. From faith to faith to glory to glory, I'm going to do exactly what God has called me to do with or without you. Amen? Glory to God. I'm going to do what God has called me to do, regardless if I have it or don't have it. Amen? Because God is great on the inside of me. Anybody believe that tonight? We serve an amazing God. And we serve an all-time God. And we got to learn how to act like we know that he is an on-time God. Amen? In regards to where you are in your life and what you're facing right now, be grateful and thankful that God still showed up. Amen. Amen? People may not show up for you when you expect them to. But one thing I do know about is God is going to always show up right on time. Can we give God praise for that tonight? Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, we can stand to our feet tonight.
Amen. And just bless God and thank Him for all that He has done. I don't know about you, but I'm grateful for God being real in my life. I'm grateful that God would allow us to go back through the Word of God and find scriptures, amen, that will rely and that will, amen, come bring us to a place of, hey, you're never in this by yourself. You're not going through this thing alone. But amen, but God wants us to know that though that thing may seem dead, I can always bring it back to life. Amen. There is nothing too hard for God. With God, all things are possible. Come on, tell your neighbor, with God, all things are possible. It doesn't matter what it is. With God, all things are possible. And you got to learn how to speak it out of your own mouth. Amen. Amen. So come on, one more time. Let's give God some glory out of praise on tonight. Hallelujah. Come on, you've been quiet all night. Can you give God some praise tonight? Thank you for his word. Hallelujah. Thank you that he is an all-time God. Hallelujah. We glorify God and we thank you for just being faithful unto us. Amen. We ask that you all will just continue to share, amen, the word of God with people each and every day. Let them know that God is going to be there. He hasn't forgotten. He hasn't, he's not forsaken you. Yeah. Amen. Sometimes God will take time to get us out the way. When we're tired of a thing, when we're tired of putting our hands to things, amen, God will begin to move in because now we're making room for him. Yeah. He can't work while you working. Come on now. He has to be the one to seal the deal, not you. Amen. All he needs for you to do is to wait on him and to apply the faith that he has given unto you. Because he's given us all a measure of faith. Am I right? He's given us all a measure of faith. And we must learn how to put that faith to work. Amen. Amen. So we honor the Lord tonight. And we thank him for just being faithful and kind unto us. We thank him, amen, for never leaving us. We thank him for never doubting us. Though our blessings may be delayed, they're never denied. And we can always trust and believe that he is going to come through. Amen. Amen. And so on tonight, let's bow. Amen. Father, we're grateful and thankful for all that you have done and said in the house on tonight. We ask, so God, that you will seal us with your word of encouragement, God, with your word of empowerment. Allow us to meditate on this word day and night, God. Allow us to apply it to our lives, Father, that we may gain more knowledge and wisdom that comes only from you. Lord, if there should be any sick among us tonight, I ask, oh God, that you would rain down your healing power even now in the name of Jesus. I pray, oh God, that you would strengthen and encourage your people, Father. From the crown of their heads to the soles of their feet, provide, meet every need in their lives, Lord. In the name of Jesus, let them never forsake any you, Father, but let them always trust in you and never doubt you, God. For you are an amazing Father. You are a God that will answer all things, but just in your timing. Help us the more to wait on you. Help us the more to trust in you. And we'll forever give your name glory and honor for the great things that you are getting ready to do. And for those things that you've already done. But Lord, we even ask that even as we leave this place, you go and you be with us. Allow us to make it back to our many different destinations and find them in perfect peace. And we'll forever give your name glory and honor and praise. Of course, your son Jesus that we do for you tonight. Amen. amen. And amen. Amen. We love you. There's nothing that you can do about it on tonight. Amen.